Welcome to the Center for Anesthesia podcast series. In this podcast, we will introduce cardiopulmonary exercise testing, also known as CPEX. After listening to this podcast, you should know what CPEX is used for, what pretest information is gathered, what equipment is used during the test, what the actual test looks like, how the information is recorded, how to interpret the classic plot, and how to begin analyzing a test. Cardiopulmonary exercise testing, also known as CPET or CPEX, is a non-invasive simultaneous measurement of the cardiovascular and respiratory system during exercise to assess a patient's exercise capacity. There are several reasons doctors refer patients who will be having surgery to CPEX. These include assessing a patient's fitness for surgery, investigating the cause of a patient's breathlessness, and monitoring disease progression and severity. CPEX helps assess the risk of surgery and determine the appropriate preoperative and postoperative care for the patient. Before beginning the actual test, the exercise physiologist measures the patient's height and weight, asks the patient to fill out a physical activity questionnaire, and records the patient's medical and drug history. The physiologist then uses a spirometry test to determine the patient's forced vital capacity and forced expiratory volume in one second. Lastly, the physiologist measures the patient's hemoglobin by taking a hemocute to see if the patient is anemic. To take measurements of the patient's heart and lungs, the exam uses a variety of equipment. First, the patient will sit on the cycle ergometer. The patient's heart rate is recorded with a 12-lead ECG. The patient's blood pressure is measured non-invasively. A soft rubber mask measures the oxygen that the patient consumes, called the VO2, and the carbon dioxide the patient produces, called the VCO2. A saturation probe measures the level of oxygen in the patient's blood. The test will take around 20 minutes, but here is a short video of what a test will look like. The patient sits on the cycle ergometer for three minutes without cycling. Then, the patient begins unloaded cycling, where there is no resistance on the bicycle. The patient should cycle at about 60 revolutions per minute. Soon, resistance will build on the bicycle at a preset rate, as if the patient is cycling up a hill, therefore making the patient do work. The test aims for the patient to cycle up the hill for about 10 minutes. Once the patient can no longer cycle, the resistance is removed, but the patient will keep cycling very slowly to warm down. The patient will then stop cycling but stay seated on the bicycle for a couple more minutes. The data is recorded in the form of a nine panel plot. We analyze this together with the ECG. To improve our interpretation of the graphs, we smooth them by plotting the middle five of every seven breaths. We read the nine panel plot in a specific order that begins from the third graph. Today, we will just look at this classic plot. This graph shows time versus VO2, VCO2, both measured in liters per minute, and work, measured in watts. You can see on the graph the period of rest where the patient sat on the ergometer without cycling, the period with unloaded cycling, the uphill cycling where the patient stopped, and the warm down period. This plot is the first graph we look at because it's the most simple to interpret. As you can see on the graph, at first the VO2 is greater than the VCO2. As resistance grows on the ergometer, the VO2 rises in parallel with the work the patient is doing. At some point, the VCO2 begins to rise more quickly than the VO2. Once the patient stops and resistance is lifted off the ergometer, both the VO2 and the VCO2 decrease. Since on this graph the VCO2 began to rise quicker than the VO2, the patient probably reached his or her anaerobic threshold and continued exercising beyond this point. The anaerobic threshold, also known as the lactate threshold, is one of the key values interpreted from this test. During exercise, oxygen is supplied to the muscles. As exercise becomes more intense, aerobic metabolism cannot meet the energy demands of the body, and anaerobic metabolism supplements aerobic metabolism. A consequence of anaerobic glycosis is the production of lactate and hydrogen ions. To stop the body's pH from falling, the hydrogen ions are buffered by bicarbonate, producing carbonic acid. Carbonic acid splits into water and CO2. Therefore, extra CO2 is made. 
This graph shows us the raw data of where extra CO2 is made, allowing us to find the anaerobic threshold. However, the anaerobic threshold that we use in our reports is calculated from the other graphs of the nine panel plot. It is the VO2 measured in milliliters per kilogram per minute at the point at which the VCO2 begins to rise more quickly than the VO2. The second important value that we take from this graph is the peak VO2. This represents the highest O2 consumed by the patient during the test. Third, it is important to note how much work the patient did. While looking at this information, there are a couple of important questions to consider. First, why did the patient stop cycling? Determining whether the patient's breathing, heart, or muscles stop the test helps to determine the risk the patient will undergo during surgery, as usually our heart limits our exercise before our lungs do. Second, how reliable is the data? This is determined by any mishaps during the test, such as if the ECG fell off or if the mask was not tight enough and therefore leaking. Third, was the test a maximal one? If the patient was not giving his or her full effort, then the peak VO2 measured will not be a true peak VO2. Fourth, were there any significant clinical events during the test, such as angina or chest pain? You should now know what a CPEX test is used for the pretest information recorded, the equipment used, what the actual test looks like, what the classic plot looks like, and what key files can be obtained from it, and how to analyze the test. Next time, we'll take a look at the other graphs in the nine-panel plot and discuss in more detail what the values obtained through the test mean for the patient.